everyone, here is the completion of Aussie News for today. The Philippines registers more than 33,000 new COVID-19 infections. The Philippines reports 33,169 new COVID-19 infections, a new record daily spike pushing the number of confirmed cases in the Southeast Asian country to 2,998,530. The Department of Health says the positivity rate continued rising to a record 46%. 145 more people died from COVID-19 complexions, bringing the country's death toll to 52,293. Vince Dizon, the deputy chief implementer of the government's response against COVID-19, says the demand for COVID-19 tests surged, straining the country's laboratories. At the virtual press conference, Dizon says that COVID-19 testing laboratories are experiencing a staffing shortage because many of its medical and laboratory technicians have contracted the virus and needed isolation, delaying the turnaround time of the test results. Dizon notes that hospitals are facing the same situation as more nurses and doctors are also getting sick. The Philippines, which has around 110 million population, has tested more than 24 million people since the outbreak in 2020. <laughs> Indonesia launches booster shot after the Omicron variant rises in the country. Indonesia kicks off its COVID-19 booster program for the general public as the world's fourth most populous nation hit an almost three-month high in cases amid the rise of the Omicron variant. The booster rollout came amid concern about the spread of the Omicron variant in Indonesia, a densely populated developing nation that was hit with a crappling Delta wave in July 2021. Indonesia recorded 802 new cases, the highest in almost three months, with senior cabinet minister Luhut Panjaitan saying that numbers could peak in February. President Joko Widodo announces that booster will be offered free for all those eligible after initial discussion about charging for boosters sparks controversy. The booster rollout for which the Sinovac, AstraZeneca, Pfizer and Zivifax vaccines have been approved is running a parallel with the main COVID-19 vaccination program. According to the Health Ministry data, Indonesia has pledged to vaccinate more than 208 million of its 270 million people, but less than 56% of the target population has received two shots of COVID-19 vaccine so far. Experts say vaccine hesitancy and logistics in the sprawling archipelago have slowed distribution. Meanwhile, Health Minister Budi Gunadi Sadikin said booster shots in Indonesia will be administered as half doses in line with studies that confirmed the efficacy of that dosage. United Nations called Thailand to prevent the declining of situation in Myanmar. A United Nations envoy calls on Thailand's support to prevent a declining situation in the crisis in neighboring Myanmar and welcomed assurances that refugees fleeing military operations and crossing the border into Thailand were provided with protection by the Thai government. Noelin Hazar, the United Nations Secretary General's Special Envoy on Myanmar, also discussed the implementation of inclusive dialogue in Myanmar and the stalled five-point peace planned by the Association of Southeast Asian Nations during a meeting with Thai Prime Minister Prayut chan ocha in Bangkok. Thailand has long-standing ties with Myanmar's military, an analyst says that the fear of a flood of refugees had made Bangkok more cautious in its policy and condemnation towards the Myanmar junta despite its support for the ASEAN effort. Prayut in a statement says Thailand had set up humanitarian areas along its border and would only send people back to Myanmar when they were ready or volunteered to travel back. China and Indonesia work together, fight the pandemic and economic recovery. Chinese President Xi Jinping says China and Indonesia should advance cooperation in a coordinated manner in the post-pandemic era. In a phone conversation with Indonesian President Joko Widodo, she suggests the two sides integrate Belt and Road cooperation with China's building of a new development pattern. China-Indonesia relations have been moving forward while maintaining stability in defiance of the COVID-19 pandemic. 
She stresses the two sides should work together to fight the pandemic and set a good example of health cooperation. In addition, Joko Widodo says the bilateral trade and investment between Indonesia and China surged, while health and medical cooperation saw fruitful results, especially the cooperation in COVID-19 vaccines and research and development of drugs, as 80% of vaccines used in Indonesia came from China. He said Indonesia would like to boost cooperation in economy, trade and the fight against the pandemic with China while actively advance the Belt and Road Initiative. Joko Widodo says Indonesia welcomes Chinese companies' investment in carrying out cooperation in high-tech and green development. Joko Widodo also says his country, which holds the G20 rotating presidency this year, is willing to work closely with China to encourage the G20 to play a positive role in promoting global solidarity and world economic recovery. The two countries have launched a high-level dialogue cooperation mechanism and established a new pattern of bilateral cooperation on the four-wheel drive of political, economic, cultural and maritime affairs. Election Commission of the Philippines rejects petition banned Ferdinand Marcos from presidential election. Uh -oh. The Philippines Election Commission threw out a petition seeking to bar the son of the late dictator, Ferdinand Marcos, from running in this year's election, one of several complaints filed in an attempt to derail his presidential bid. <laughs> Lawyers in the petition says the petition had sought to invalidate the candidacy of Ferdinand Marcos Jr., who has emerged as a clear favorite after accusing him of misrepresenting his eligibility because of a prior tax conviction but the second division of the Commission on Elections dismissed the complaint. A spokesman for Marcos thanked the Comelec for allowing him to run for public office free from any form of harassment and discrimination. The complaint is among several filed by groups seeking the expulsion of Marcos, a career politician who has served as a congressman, senator and provincial governor, mostly over a 1995 conviction for tax violations while in public office which petitioners have argued meant a lifetime election ban. Japan strongly condemns North Korea's missile launch. The Japanese Chief Cabinet Secretary says Japan strongly condemns North Korea's repeated missile launches after North Korea fired two suspected short-range ballistic missiles from Pyongyang. In less than two weeks, nuclear-armed North Korea has conducted three other missile tests and unusual frequency of launches. The two of those involved single hypersonic missiles capable of high speed and maneuvering after launch involved a pair of short-range ballistic missiles fired from the train cars. Chief Cabinet Secretary Hirokazu Matsuno condensed the launches as a threat to the region's peace and security. The latest launches have drawn both condemnation and an appeal for dialogue from a United States administration that has imposed new sanctions over North Korean missile launches and pushing for more. South Korea artist North Korea choose peace over missile launch. South Korea's Unification Ministry, which handles inter-Korean affairs, urges North Korea to choose peace rather than missile launches. Earlier in the day, South Korea's military reported that North Korea fired two suspected short-range ballistic missiles east to war from Sunan airfield in its capital city of Pyongyang the fourth test this month to demonstrate its expanding missile arsenal. The rapid series of launches drew mixed reactions from South Korean residents. Some are worried and urged the government to be prepared, while another felt indifferent due to the frequency of missile launches. A professor at the University of North Korean study in Seoul, Yang Moon Jin, believes the missile launches are a response to the new sanctions by the United States against North Korea and a message to urge South Korea to suspend the annual joint military drills with the United States. China sends emergency goods to Tonga to help people affected by volcanic eruption. Foreign Ministry spokesman Zhao Lizian at a press briefing in Beijing says China will deliver emergency goods of drinking water, personal protective equipment and disaster relief supplies to Tonga. 
the massive eruption of the Hunga Tonga Hunga Ha'apa'i volcano in Tonga has lately sent tsunamis sweeping across the shore of the South Pacific Island country, and multiple countries nearby have reported rising water levels or issued tsunami warnings. The eruption and its ensuing tsunami are believed to have displaced people, severed communications and suspended flights. China will provide Tonga with 100,000 US dollars in cash as a humanitarian assistance to help people affected by a massive underwater volcanic eruption of Tonga. The Chinese government attaches great importance to the safety of Chinese citizens and agencies in Tonga. The Chinese embassy in Tonga issued a safety warning on volcanic eruption and tsunami. President of South Korea Moon Jae-in arriving in Saudi Arabia to discuss bilateral relations. South Korean President Moon Jae-in arrives in Saudi Arabia's capital, Riyadh, as part of his official tour of the Gulf. Jae-in and his official delegation are welcomed on the tarmac by Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman before both leaders meet to discuss bilateral relations. A Shark Television reports, South Korea's LG Corp is planning to establish its regional headquarters in Riyadh. Prime Minister of Japan plans stronger COVID-19 restrictions after country records more new cases. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida says he plans to impose a state of quasi-emergency, meaning stronger COVID-19 curbs on dining and gatherings, on 13 regions including Tokyo from January 21 to February 13. He says the government had halted a program where those vaccinated or with negative test results will be exempted from coronavirus restrictions as various cases jumped. Local media reports it comes as Japan's new COVID-19 cases jumped to a record. In addition, broadcaster TBS informs the country had more than 27,000 new cases, exceeding the previous high seen in August 2021 shortly after Tokyo hosted the Summer Olympics. The Western Prefecture of Osaka posted a record 5,396 new cases, while Tokyo had 5,185, the highest since August 2021. Thank you very much, everyone, and thank you for Jules Posto Wardrobe. Stay safe, stay healthy, and enjoy your weekend.